wanted a fresh start when he left DEI and moved over to Hendrick Motorsports, but I don't think we all understood the number choosing process that he went through during his switch over to Hendrick. And he finally talked about it on the Dale Jr. download this week. And it was actually pretty interesting because Dale really wanted the number 51, you know, like Rowdy Burns. That's what he wanted his number to be because he just wanted a completely fresh new start without really considering any of the other factors, which I feel like is very on brand for Dale from time to time until he has this like realization moment of being like, oh yeah, it's more than just myself because uh, I think he fails to understand how big he is at times, at least in the NASCAR realm of things. So he went on his podcast and during the, the Ask Junior section, he was asked about the number process and he went on to talk about how he chose or why he wanted to be the number 51 and then why that didn't work out and take a listen to what he had to say real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's they like... But they, you know, num the number 50... A1. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the number 50, right, is a very... I mean, it's perfect for a guy like A.J. Foyt, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And so, and, and A.J. ran that number a time or two. 51, like I say. And so we were looking at 51... I wanted 51. Huh. No one else in my camp, in Rick or anybody else, wanted 51. They were like, 51? What? What? That's nothing. Why? <laughs> What's the connection, right? And I was like, I don't know, man. We just start new and just. Uh, but I. But then I kept thinking about my the you know our fans uh, with that love this eight and had all this eight stuff. And I'm like, man, it's got to. We got to find. We got to go with something with an eight. And that was everybody else's opinion too. So, I was thinking. 28. 28's it. I wanted 28. We're going to get 28. We're going to be 28. Nobody's 28. Let's be 28. Holy crap. I did not know this. <laughs> yeah. And 20. they were like, well, we got to ask Yates. Yeah. I'm like, we do? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why? I don't need to ask nobody. And so we, we called Yates up, Robert, and they actually talked to Texaco. And Texaco said hard no. Now, that, I don't think that they had rights to this number in the series, right? They're not even the sponsor anymore. But something about the, the, the history and the heritage and legacy of that number was important to them. And um, Yates was like, man, please don't do this. They, we, mm -hmm. I don't believe they could have stopped us, but they were like, hey, I, what about 88? Would you, would you, we, we would give you 88. And I'm like, oh, we didn't even know that was available. We didn't know that was even a possibility. And so, um, you know, they, they were like, hey, you can have 88. And I'm thinking, that's perfect. One, instead of one eight, two yeah. eights. And we got the font as close as we could without getting another lawsuit. And there you have it. We went to the racetrack with 88s. That is a heck of a story, actually. It is. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought that 88 was, would be more available than the 28? Yeah. I mean, because like the eighty eight was a Dale they Jarrett. Were, like, right. We knew it yeah. was Dale Jarrett yeah. at the time. I think Roush had the thirty. What, what was the Roush? Thirty eight and eighty eight. Ooh, that was before my time. Yeah, Roush? Was, Yates was thirty eight. Or Yates? Uh, Yates. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 They were thirty eight with Elliot Sadler. Um, right. Yeah. Why did I think that Ricky is so Rudd baffling to me yeah. that the Texaco Havlin. Yeah, they, they told they, would, they, they told me they had discussed it with the with the, the they went they reached out to the partners that were part of that legacy with right. that team right and they all agreed like we really would love to not see this number come back but will you take the eighty eight yeah mm. yeah. So obviously, like, perfect world scenario, he would love to have taken the number eight with him and all that brand equity he had built up with that number to Hendrick Motorsports. And unfortunately, you know who obviously would not allow that to happen because instead she needed to put Mark Martin and Eric Almarola in the car. I think Regan Smith also maybe made a start or two. I didn't fact check it, but it sounds good enough. Either way, he obviously couldn't take it, so they had to pick something new. 51 was on the table for him, and then everybody else talked some sense into him, and they were like, dude, your fans have millions of dollars in number eight merch, Maybe we consider that, not to mention the thousands of number eight tattoos that are <laughs> permanently on the bodies of a decent amount of fans. So he decided that, yeah, you're right. We should go with something that has the number eight in it. He wanted the number 28. Called up Robert Yates, like he said, and uh, Robert Yates was like, I don't know. Let me call Texaco real quick and see what they had to say about it. Texaco gave them a hard no. Absolutely cannot happen. And that's a little bit interesting because they were currently the sponsor on the 42 car with Haviland at that point, or Haviland. Haviland? Doesn't matter. Regardless, 
they wouldn't allow that to happen. Obviously, they had a lot of brand equity built up with Davey Allison, and there's maybe not the desire to want them to let it go. But at the same time, like Dale mentioned, they didn't really have the ultimate say on it. It was more just like a courtesy call to be like, hey, do you mind? Because at the end of the day, if Robert Yates says go ahead and use it and NASCAR issues it to them, they can go ahead and use it. It's not like Texaco has this permanent copyright and protection trademark on this number, maybe on the font and uh, the styling of it, but that didn't fall into the Hendrick style guide anyways. So that was a little confusing why they wouldn't allow that to happen. Obviously, it would have been great if they would have just been like, hey, we'll just join you as a sponsor. Sorry, what was that, 2007? Sorry, Juan Pablo Montoya, we're not going to stay on that car. So, at the same time, I can completely understand why Robert Yates was, would have been skeptical of it and maybe a little uneasy about it, but he seemed fine with it. So then once they found out that wouldn't happen, they obviously uh, pivoted to the number 88. Robert Yates offered them the number 88, and Dale was like, oh, I didn't even think about 88, which is perfect because, well, two eights back to back, and his fans have a number of eight things, so they can just add another, <laughs> add another eight to it. But he did mention that they tried to keep the font of the 88 as close as possible to the 8 original font without getting sued by you know who. I would argue that it's not really that close. It's close enough, right? But there is some obvious changes, which obviously they needed to have because, well, they didn't want to get sued and embroiled in another lawsuit. So that was obviously the best case scenario. There's also talk of him going with the number 81 which he talked about in a uh, feature that he did uh, when they were talking about the switch over to Hendrick, to the point where he even showed Rick what he wanted the number 81 Mountain Dew Chevrolet to look like. And then there was also some talk of doing the number 38, which I think obviously makes the most sense, right? It's his dad's number, it's his number, mash him into one. The all-time great David Gillen drove that number. <laughs> Elliot Sadler flipped it down Talladega twice. He won two races in it. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> 38 would have actually been pretty cool. 28 would have been even cooler because obviously that has a huge history in NASCAR. And then 88 just always felt like Dale Jarrett's number, but then obviously that's now Dale Jr.'s number for eternity. Sorry, Dale Jarrett, but you have to be named Dale to drive the number 88. Regardless, it is pretty cool to finally like hear the background story in this. He commented on it a few weeks ago on Twitter. Shout out to Ryan. I'm not going to attempt your last name because uh, it's not in front of me and I don't want to screw it up. But he posted... a. Uh, uh, screenshots of Dale's potential number choices uh, when he made that move to Hendrick. So it's pretty cool to see him comment on it and then also talk about it on his podcast this week. But if he would have been number 51, that would have been absolutely wild. It doesn't really fit the uh, the numbering sequence at Hendrick. Neither did 88 either, and 9 doesn't now. But uh, it would have been very odd to see the number 51 out there because it's just not something we've seen. But hey, it would end up going to Kurt Busch when he was at Phoenix Racing full-time there for a season, and it did pretty well. Almost won that Sonoma race, right? So, well, he at least podiumed. Either way, it was pretty cool to see Dale finally talk about that and uh, just kind of give some background thought into it. So, what do you think? Dale in the 88 obviously makes the most sense, but I think, which would you guys have chosen? 88, 51, 81, 38, or 28? Too many options here, but uh, still cool to hear the background. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Twitter, Instagram, and threads at BreakHardBlog.